Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman, where you'll learn to awaken your divine intuition and open your human heart. Sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. Here's Sarah. Oh, thank you. No. You are. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. Uh, today, we are having, as usual, Free Readings Tuesday, which means you can call in to 844-390-8255. It's 844-390-8255. And um, best results, because people email me and ask, like, how do I get in? So we don't have that many spots. So it is first come, first serve. But we don't answer the phone until 11 Pacific. Best, best shot is get right on there at 11 and then kind of listen because we'll often have a gap midway through. So just kind of listen for me to say, hey, lines are open or whatever it is I'm going to say to help you help you connect in. Um, today, our subject is can we really release our fears and especially these last couple years, multiple years, um, we have been under a pretty big cloud of fear, a lot of us. Um, and most of much of that fear is real, such as um, the whole situation with the virus and climate emergencies and so forth. And much of that fear is amplified or um, created into something it's not, created into the giant monster in the closet by some of the things we especially love and that have been especially useful, such as the news and social media and misinformation and people sort of letting their anxiety spin out of control. So you might think of your anxiety as this sort of uh, feeling in your chest and then if you kind of add some fuel to that by looking at some social media or you add some fuel to that for listening to a really toxic friend or family member and suddenly this starts to flame up and suddenly it's swirling around and we're in this tornado or cloud or fire of fear and anxiety. So how do we release that? And is it even possible? Um, so one of the things we're going to talk about today is how to let go of fear, especially when the threat is over. So we're not retaining that anxious sense, which is really useful. I mean, it's sent to warn us danger, you know, but when the threat's over, we don't need to stay in that anxious place. So learn why holding on to fear is uh, a habit of the mind or a thought system that we can choose to let go of. We can learn to differentiate between what's real fear and um, what's just this sort of spiraling thought process or group thought or empathic overwhelm or sensitivity that's just kind of like gone wild with um like fear gone wild. And so it affects us day to day and sort of causes us to sink into some really uh, despairing places. Um, we've got some folks on hold and we'll get to you in just a moment. For housekeeping, I wanted to remind you, so currently we are working on a self-study, um, the mediumship project. And that's a self-study course on the website, sarahwiseman.com. And we will start very soon the Psychic Claire's Project. And this course is really designed especially for people who um, don't have any background or have just dabbled a tiny little bit in spiritual intuition, especially the idea of the Psychic Claire's, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, and so on. And so if you are interested in finding out, you know, what are the Claire's? How do I use them? How can I sort of uh, test the waters of, of understanding my own psychic gifts, or how can I get started understanding what all this is about, that would be the course for you. Uh, sometimes uh, 
the self-study courses can be <laughs> very intense, but this one especially is designed for people who are just stepping in, the Psychic Claire's Project, and that's at sarahweisman.com under courses. I have also just opened for early birds winter session of the direct training with me. Um, so for those of you who are like, I always wanted to do that. Oh, I miss the deadline. They're all sold out, which kind of continually happens because uh, we are limited in our space. Go to the website, go to training, and you'll see what to sign up for there. Um, let's see. Uh, the last thing I wanted to remind you. Oh, so we're coming into October very soon, which means a new month, but it also means to me, for those of us in American culture say, we're really used to this summer is over in August and then school begins in uh, September, you know, used to be. And now October, we sort of enter this pre-winter, pre-holiday here today in Oregon, it's raining and wind is blustering around. And so we start to enter this period of inwardness that'll go through winter solstice. It starts to get darker earlier. The difference this year and last year too, is that we have all been so internal these last few years with uh, the virus and quarantine and lockdown and all of those things that we've been doing all over the world that a lot of you may feel, I feel like kicking and screaming, like, wait, no, I don't want to go inward. All I've been doing is being inward for the last couple of years. So I would um, suggest that you consider this as your final, uh, your final your final dive into the inner, this from now until winter when the light comes again at winter solstice, um, just consider what, you know, we all, when this started, uh, the virus started, we all railed against it. And then we kind of got used to the new way. And then we kind of this summer in some places got the feeling of freedom again, or at least being outside. and. Um, use this time to sweep back and consider what things did I accomplish? I don't mean your uh, goals or your, uh, I don't mean the outer things. I mean, what things did I, was I presented with by this enforced inner time? What things was I forced to look at? What things did I make progress on or maybe got through those. And now this last sweep, what is still there that needs to be looked at? And for some of you, it might be family relationships. It might be your relationship to your body. It might be habits and addictions. It might be your money, karma. It might be your work. It might be uh, your primary relationship if you have one. So just go through and begin to look at all the things in your life, what's working, and then what is still, I use that term, what is still sticky? What hasn't been resolved or looked at or solved or healed? And that's what these months are inviting you to look at when you go in or that's what to put at top of the list, like, oh, uh, okay, body, that is where I'm supposed to go, or okay, uh, my parents, or okay, my work, you know, those are, I don't know what it is for each person, but the big things, what are we meant to be looking at? And put that to your, the top of your focus and ask the universe to show you and advise you what is the last piece of the puzzle that you're waiting to get these next few months. Alrighty, let's go. So we have free readings Tuesday. Uh, you can call in to 844-390-8255, 844-390-8255. And it looks like we have Lois on the line. Lois, welcome. Hi, good. Uh, well, I want to say good afternoon. I'm in New York, but I know you're on the West Coast. So hi. Yeah. Um, hi. 
this topic is so pertinent to, I guess, why I wanted to try and get on uh, the line today. Um, and you put it so brilliantly, but, you know, um, my, I talked to you a couple of months ago and, uh, I am reinventing or trying to reinvent myself to get back out into the workforce in a meaningful way, uh, given my background and blah, blah, blah. And you, you were very encouraging. You compared me to Iris Appel because of my age, which oh, I, right. I, okay. I am like following her on Facebook now because I love her so much. And, you know, she, she is my, um, my muse, so to speak, but I am so stuck, Sarah. I, I'm driving myself crazy. I can't get out of my own way. Uh, the list you just gave was perfect. There are things I've been working on during the pandemic, but the two things that come up for me that I'm so stuck around are work and friends because I've changed friends in the past couple of years, people that have been in my life for like 50, 60 years. I'm not really talking too much anymore. And the work thing is my worst nemesis because I am – it's making me depressed. I don't know how to get out of my own way. I'm doing things here and there, but nothing's gelling. And I question myself all the time as to whether this is really something I should be trying to do um, or should I, you know, just go to a department store and because I want to work, I want to do something mm -hmm. meaningful, but I've worked for myself for a long time. So I'm used to making my own time, my own schedule, you know, mostly with creative work. So yeah. I don't know. If you know, it really seems Hell. like, um, <laughs> so I don't, it's the Iris Appel, for those who don't know, she's um, this super flamboyant fashion person who's old, old, quite old, I think now. I think she passed. I'm not sure. She's 100. No, okay. So she's 100. 100. So she... What it's not, what's about you, the similarity between you and her is not the age, you're not a hundred at all, but it's not even that you're over 40, say. Um, it's really about her daring, like she just did her thing, right? And she didn't really care. She just did what interests her. And I have a feeling that what it's feeling like to me is that you have all these gifts, but you're trying to put yourself in this little box of what does everyone want? And I think mm -hmm. that that is the place. Like, I don't think you've ever given yourself the luxury or not for a long time of what do you, what do you want? What do mm -hmm. you want to do as your art and your design? And, and maybe um, maybe you don't even know that yet. Maybe that's part of the exploration, but it feels like you're trying to see like how it's almost like a version of people pleasing with your work. Like, how can I make something that's going to sell, you know, or that's going to, and I think what Iris did is she didn't really, she didn't really care, right? She just did her thing. And so there's something about daring to really go in your own direction and see what happens there. What does that bring up for you? Like, what have you always wanted to do, but just were like, that's too weird. I just can't do that. Um, I love renovating houses. I, uh, and I just can't seem to get myself into the real estate thing. I also like, um, planning them out and decorating them on the inside. And that's what I basically did for like 15 years. I was a decorator, but I never gave up my real estate license, but I get, uh, I am, I shake when I think about going into that real estate office, I can't bring myself to walk in comfortably because I haven't sold anything. And I just feel everyone's out there doing their own thing and, you know, their business, is I wouldn't say it's flourishing there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of success around where I am and I I just feel like um I'm not connecting I I yeah, Lois, I, I, I sound so inarticulate I I'm sorry but I guess yeah Lois I don't I, I don't think that's emotion. your 
I don't think that's your path at all. I think right now in your life, you're meant to do something incredibly original and creative. And um, like I'm sure say we look at like Iris, when she put on those round glasses, those big, thick, I think they're white yeah. or orange or something. I'm sure everyone, I'm sure Iris's mother would have said, oh, Iris, you can't wear those. Those are too far out there. And she just put them on and said, yep, this is awesome. And that's the piece of you, instead of trying to do what everybody's doing, instead of trying to fit in, it would be wonderful to take some time and be as outrageous in terms of your design and how you dress and, and what you're doing as outrageous as you've ever dared to do as an experiment and see what happens. I have a feeling it's gonna kind of unlock these chains of like, oh, I can only do it this way or I can only do it that way. So that's what I'd like to, to give you almost like as a task is um, to spend a week well, being as outrageous as you can and see what it brings up in here because that's the secret to unlocking whatever uh, the fear is there for you. You, okay. this need to well, be uh, interesting that you say that especially about like dressing and stuff because one thing I did work on during the pandemic was my body I finally knocked off this excess weight I've been carrying around for the past five years and I'm getting Great. into my clothes that I wore five years ago but I, I with a different view and I'm doing I'm wearing things that I always wanted to wear dressing putting makeup on in a way that I feel very, you know, it's it's like a version of me that's like coming out of the closet almost. Yeah, exactly. I can't explain it any other way. Yeah, and, and that's exactly. So tomorrow, I. Yeah, yeah no, that yeah, Lois, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I think you've got the right track. I think I'm, I'm gonna let you go because you're on the right track. A version of you that has not been expressed is crying to be, to be let out. Iris is a great iconic example. Uh, did what she wanted. Does what she wants. Um, and just practice with that. And there will be discomfort going out of your, you know, coloring outside the lines, but this is where, this is where the answer lies. Anyway, thank you so much for calling thank in. You. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, some of us are at, some of us are, a lot of you guys are incredibly creative and one of the beautiful things about, say, social media is it's shown us that we can all create our own thing. One of the terrible things about social media is that um, we are taught that we have to be a certain way. We have to look a certain way. We have to act a certain way. Um, you know, one of the reasons I, you know, Zoom's been around a long time, and I'm only practically this year doing Zoom for the first time. And, you know, I have massively wild, crazy, curly hair. Look, right? This is this is just like it just <laughs> it does not do anything different. And so I don't look like I'm certainly far, far, far older than you know the influencers and weigh a lot more. So okay, yeah, okay. Here's me, here's my soul in this body, in this lifetime, trying to do my thing. And yeah, but Sarah, cool. you are one heck of an influencer. I might just add that. Oh, thank you well, very much. okay, okay. Thank you, Cameron. But that's not my point. <laughs> I know, but I just wanted to put that in there because you are doing a heck of a job with your people well, and, okay. and your work. So, okay, thank you. But my point is, we can be ourselves. We don't have to be in the box of whoever. We just need to express. Okay, uh, now I'm blushing. Now my face is all red. Oh, well, okay. Vicki, let's go with you. What would you like to ask today? Uh, my question is about a move. I was planning on moving before the pandemic. And then I sort of lost my momentum on it. I had some medical things that I've been having to uh, get checked out. And I'm just wondering if you think that it's a good idea. Where were you trying to move from and where were you trying to move to? I am trying to move from Los Angeles north about, oh, say 200 miles. Like um, Northern California? Well, so, in Central California, okay. the Central Coast, like uh, Pismo Beach area. Oh, okay. okay. 
Um, you know, uh, and and um, so here where I live, I live north of that, up in Oregon, about an hour south of Portland. Um, we okay. have a kind of market where, you know, the like there's no houses for sale, and then if there is a house, you know, it sells immediately. Is that part of what you found, or is that part of your belief system? Like it's going to be hard, or or maybe you're not even trying to get a house. You're is well, that you know, here's the thing. Uh, I'm trying to move forward. I just turned 60. And um, that was a place where we had a vacation home with the family. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering, I'm trying to move forward. Should I move somewhere where I don't have any connection to the family? Or or should I move up there where I do have some family members, but I have fond memories of being up there? So I'm just kind of thinking, is it a new start for me to go? I don't want to go backwards. You know what I mean? I'm trying to move forward. Yes. Um, I think that that is, um, I think there's two things. I think that the universe wanted you to have like a safe, familiar haven for working through some of the medical stuff. It wasn't time to do a change in addition to that um, stress or anxiety that might have come from doing that. And so the universe Mm -hmm. was like, yep, we see she wants to move, but we got to get her through this first. So we're going to slow things down a bit. And then the next is, I agree with you. Um, Sometimes it's hard to know, like you can go anywhere. So why wouldn't you go to like Berlin? You could go to Berlin or you could go to- I could go anywhere. Yeah. So this idea of um, going to the family vacation home, uh, it's not, it's not, it's what pops into your mind because you have fond associations and also this feeling of if I let go of where I am now and I let go of my family home or my family vacation home, I will be completely untethered. I will have nothing familiar. I will be heartbroken by uh, the loss of all that old. And so this is the part, yeah, this is the part that is actually not true. you will find, I think you are kind of going north similar, but but not that particular town. Um, right, you I have ready. a piece of property that's mm-hmm. up there mm-hmm. and um, I wanted to develop it. Uh, but then again, with all of these health things, I'm thinking, how can I develop yeah. land when I'm like 60? You know, I'm thinking I have this land, I got it for a good deal. Yeah, It is more north than than where the family home is it's in the general it's in the same county but Mm -hmm. it's north of that and also there's san luis obispo the town of san luis obispo which is so wonderful yeah that sounded uh, that would be north of the family home as well yeah i don't see the property it's too much and you're sort of super Mm -hmm. distant you're super disinterested in doing that whole path. I just just lost interest in it. And I keep thinking, is this the pandemic or just not, I mean, I'm still going to make a profit if I sell it today. So it was a good investment either way, but. Yeah. You want things to be easy, fun, easy to find connections. San Luis Obispo sounds really good. It sounds, um, or something like that. So you've got, uh, so the main thing is spending some time with yourself to release the thought that if you move, you're going to be lonely or heartbroken or letting go of too much all at once or um, wrecking everything. Just kind of letting well, go. Well, I've been in Los Angeles since 1986. Yeah. So I've been here. Yeah. For, you know, I think I'm, yeah. I might have used this example. I don't remember where, but I, I always have this thought, um, you know, when you're in, when I was in kindergarten, we only had cubbies. And then to go to first grade, you had to get a locker. And like, I just loved my cubby. And then but you know, <laughs> first grade, and it's fine. You know, we're continually going through change and we meet it and it's fine. It's no problem. So, right. yeah, I think um, let go of the wow. property. You let go of that and just just go where it feels fun to you. It's that's you're ready for that. And um, this might not happen for a couple months because you still got some other things to attend to, and that's no problem either. So yes, thank you. Hey, Vicky, well, thank thanks for so calling. Thanks. Yeah, thanks thank for calling. You. I appreciate okay, your time. Yeah, 
Yeah, a lot of people are on the move right now, you know, this internal. Uh, so the question is always, are you looking for an external move, which a lot of people are, or are you looking for, are you in need of an internal move? And so that is the question. And sometimes it's both. We have the internal change um, really needing attention. Um, and then we've got the external that maybe we need a change or maybe it's a distraction. In um, Vicky's case, she's done a lot of the internal work. She's working through the medical, um, but it's the external that needs, she's ready for that, that it's a good time for her there. Um, I do wanna talk a little bit of Vicky's idea segues into this idea of can we really release our fears learn why holding on to fear um, is a mind habit that we can choose to release and when we are making these big changes especially if we haven't made changes in a long time um, especially if we haven't made changes in a long time it's almost like we forget how to do that when we're in our 20s and we um, have this, you know, everything's exciting. We can do whatever we want. We've got all the time in the world um, left. Left, And um, when we move into later, it's like there's so much, it feels like there's so much risk or we're gonna lose so much, but that's actually a misbelief. We're no different now than when we were in our, 20s, stepping into adventure, taking the risk to move. And we may have more things that we have to deal with. Like in our 20s, it was probably just us. Possibly we had some kind of partner. Um, but maybe we didn't have any family or we didn't have uh, all this stuff built up. And yet the process is the same. You're going to do it. You're going to feel afraid you're gonna feel nervous and you're gonna do it and you're gonna feel like this is amazing. I wish I'd done it earlier. So just kind of allow yourself to, being familiar does not mean um, you're growing. It may just be like, it's comfortable, no change is needed, but we're here to change. We're here to go to the next adventure. Let us go to the phones and looks like we have Donna. Donna, welcome to the program. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Hi. I um I um I practice gratitude a lot. Um and just lately I just um there's been so much loss and I just um haven't been able, you know, I don't know if it's depression and I know it's not, you know, not I'm not asking medically, but like there's nothing that I can find that sort of is like you know, I, I take care of a lot of people emotionally and things like that but like I just feel like I've just lost my strength and I don't know how to I don't know how to get it back yeah have you had people that you've lost in the pandemic um not specifically to COVID but um uh right before COVID I lost my mother and then my mother's brother died um then a few weeks ago my brother-in-law died um there just seems to be, you know, a lot of, a lot of loss. Yeah, a, a lot of loss and almost like it feels like there isn't a lot of meaning, like with all that loss, what is the meaning? Is that sort of how you're feeling? Like, what's the point? Or we're all going to well, die or something? Like Go ahead. No, not as, not as, um, not as, uh, what's, not as, um, I don't know what the word is, but I'm, I just lost it. But, but more like, like so many things have changed yeah. that I don't know how to find a new equilibrium. Yeah. You know, like a lot of us are not going back to a new normal, but it's just, I just feel so unsettled. And so uh, yeah. like I'm used to being very focused and very, you know, organized. And I just feel so out of, out of balance. Yeah. Um, one thing, I don't know where this came from, but somebody in my family was talking yesterday about how the time frame between now and the 1970s and the time frame between 
the 1970s and the 1920s is the same. So what is that, 50 years? And for all of us who are anytime over, over 40, really, um, we've been through a change in the world that's kind of unprecedented. It's like the industrial revolution, but it's the electronic social media computer revolution. And that's changed our whole um, association with the world. And so a lot of things that were terrible in the world were still terrible, but we would never know about them because it didn't come in through our phone. And so there's this mm -hmm. kind of, there has been an amping up of what we're receiving through our phones. And because everyone has access to that information, there's been an amping up in collective consciousness, like everyone's aware of the same stuff. And this creates a massive amount of um, group thought swirling around that if you're empathic, if you're sensitive, you're gonna feel it. Whereas even 10 years ago, we didn't have this going on. Um, how much are you associated with like your phone or your, the news or what, what is that for you? I mean, I do, I do keep my phone with me, but I'm not reading it constantly. Um, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't think I'm like addicted to it. And I don't, I try, like, I don't have the news on lately. Um, after the election, it just became too much for me. And so I, yeah. I don't watch, you know, I'm, I'm aware of what's going on in the world, but I don't watch a lot of, I'm not glued to the news all the time. What, what are you looking forward to in your life? Like when the pandemic's all finished and we're not back to a new, no, we're not back to normal, but we're back to a new normal. What kinds of things are interesting you or are you thinking about looking ahead? Yeah, that's, that's part of the problem, I think, is that yeah. I, I don't know. And I, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm still I'm still working a little bit, but I closed mm -hmm. my office and like there's mm -hmm. just not something new out there that I'm heading towards. Yeah. yeah. So um, so I'm not a counselor, so I can't assess, you know, any kind of depression. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so and um, I would suggest instead of fighting what's happening, um, at, I mean, if, if you're having dangerous thoughts, then that's a different story. But if you're just feeling, okay, um, if you're just feeling low and lost, um, this would be a perfect time to sort of almost like go through your calendar and like, okay, the last two years, I did this, I did this, I did this, and just look at what you've moved through. And then look at that idea of what is the last piece um, because it's, it's actually not true at all that there's nothing forming or there's nothing to look forward to. Um, another person with a different, um, awareness might be right now, like building like crazy for January or February, they might be getting all their ducks in the row for what's ahead. And so I think that there is a piece of grieving and some releasing that you still need to do, letting go of the old life and trusting that the new life is going to be good also. The new normal, um, yeah, the new normal is not the same as the old normal. And so there is grieving involved in that. Like, oh, why can't it be? Like I was talking to my husband, um, like why couldn't it be like you could just rent a little office downtown and put up little note cards and people would find you, you know, like well, that was so beautiful, uh, those old times. Or why couldn't it be that we didn't take our phone everywhere or just on and on. It's like, okay, things change. That's just, that's the, that's the time we've chosen to be born into this rapid change. Mm -hmm. And I would think, I would think there's going to be more rapid change, especially in technology around transportation and energy. There's going to be some pretty big stuff coming up. We're 
we're not a generation that we're not the 50s generation where everything was kind of smooth we're a generation of adapting to change almost every 20 years so there's more mm -hmm. and just right. accepting it can really be helpful so okay thank you yeah, yeah. good luck donna thank you uh, things things are getting better it's a slow process thanks for calling in um yeah, if we accept this idea that we are born into this lifetime and that this lifetime has more accelerated change than past lifetimes, because we're not just having the industrial revolution, we're having, um, again, we've started this Aquarian age and everything innovative is all clustering forward right away. Um, so, um obviously computer and and internet technology holograms different ways of eating and getting food together um, different transportation methods where it's going to be energy conscious um, we're already seeing the lifting off of gender rules um i don't know there's just like so many things where we're just going to a more visionary way of supporting the collective we have moved from the competitive patriarchal model i get what i need to what does everybody need what does everybody need and we can create that what's the and what's the best way to do that for humans animals and the planet so a lot of changes to make that growth happen okay looks like we have on the phone allison allison welcome to the program hi thank you Sure. Uh, this is a kind of out of the left field issue for you, probably, but who knows? Um, my ears periodically just get so itchy. It's like somebody stabbed me. And I don't know whether this is just a physical allergy or something, or maybe it's, you know, a metaphorical. So I'm throwing it out there. Yeah. I'm a therapist um, and I'm doing some acting. Uh huh. And so you listen to people all the time? Is that one of the things you do? Yes. Yes, <laughs> I listen to people all a lot. Mm -hmm. And do you um do you channel at all as as part of your spiritual practice? Do you hear uh from no. the guides? Okay. No, not I know that I, I took a psychic awareness, psychic intuition class way back in my twenties. I'm sixty-three now. Um, and I just decided at that age. I didn't want to confuse my ego with what was coming through me. And I really never developed again. I know I have some subconscious intuition, but I'm not channeling. Yeah, I don't, I think I mean, that every once but, in a while I think I am, but I'm not conscious. Yeah, I think that there's something attempting to um, make its way known to you. Well, I do, I do mm -hmm. also think that there's probably some kind of product you're using that's um, not in agreement with your skin. So that is the yeah. first thing that does come, but I also think like a, like a care conditioner something like you're with your shampoo, something like that. Like, it's just like, no, that's not a fit. The other piece is okay. I do think there's something coming in. Um, I, I think, I think there is going to be no confusion with your ego and, and another mm -hmm. voice coming through. And I think this may have terrified you or felt really confusing, especially as a, a, a therapist, you don't want to get confused while working with your clients. But I think that there is a great depth of exploration there in opening and not giving up yet or not saying this doesn't fit for me or this doesn't work for me and just kind of allowing and seeing what happens. Um, you're listening a lot to your clients and you're just hearing their voices come in like blah 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 you know in in meaningful ways but still right. it's a lot of taking it in but there's a higher source that's attempting to come through to you and okay. you're kind of just like pushing it away um mm -hmm. yeah i have part of, the, I have part of the issue is that i'm not i have very irregular hours and especially i'm not a morning person and almost everything suggest is like you know do it at the same time all you know every morning first you know first thing or whatever and my life just does not accommodate that yeah i don't so, um but, that's, 
that's one way um i kind of just tend to um i mean i don't channel all the time and i tend to receive large amounts of information over a, like a couple months and then it stops for a long time but um uh -huh. i don't think it's really important um i think when you're feeling okay. like you need to connect um and then you go sit mm -hmm. and just say hey I'd like to open to channeling from highest potential, highest level guides and mm -hmm. just sit with, sit with a journal. Like I always have like my little journal. Um, I'd like to just, what, what is the most important thing for me to know today? Or what is the most important uh -huh. thing for me to pay attention to? And just ask this super broad question and then just receive what happens. Right. Well, thank so, you. That's a great idea. Yeah, I think um, I think it is kind of scary because it will shift your practice a lot, your your <clears throat> therapy practice, and it will shift you a lot. And it's what you've been seeking, but um, it's been a little scary. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I was just thinking. I don't really feel like I've had to grow a whole lot in my life, um, mm -hmm. especially not in the last five, ten, fifteen years. So, or if I've had the opportunities, I haven't done it. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't worry anymore about my ego, like I did in my twenties, you know. Right. But, um, but yes, yeah. We're always called to grow. Um, um, like I, for my own, I take ecstatic dance on Zoom. I love it. It opens ah. everything up. Or I do mm -hmm. things that I'm really terrible at. Like currently, I'm cooking for our family two days a week, and everyone's <laughs> like. Oh no, Sarah's cooking <laughs> today. <laughs> but it helps me grow in areas that right. I'm not so great at, you know? So right. it's good right. to grow. Try something that you're not, you're gonna have beginners, you know, you take beginners approach to that, or you just you you have beginners mm -hmm. mind and don't worry about outcome. Just try it. Yeah. Okay. I'd love to hear great. what happens. Uh email me if anything exciting happens. Uh I'd love I will. to hear what your process is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm Allison from I'm Allison from Cape Cod. So I will remind okay. you. That. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for, yeah. Yeah. You know, we do. We're always called to change. Um, um, I frequently try and change my morning routine um, and do something different. And I try and I, I'm always trying to change my routines because like we get stuck in these grooves. And then it's like we have blinders on and then we can't see this beautiful, amazing thing that's trying to catch our attention, you know? So it's really useful to um, take a different path, like uh, in what you're reading, take a different path in where you're going, switch your time schedules around, just try and create some movement or some opening so the universe can come in and guide you better. If you're just like in the groove, um, the universe has to just really struggle to get through. We do have time for uh, more readings today, 844 844-390-8255, 844-390. 8255. It's free readings Tuesday. And I wanted to take, and the lines are open now. So if you call in, I did want to take a little bit of time and read a little bit of this to you. So this is from Messages from the Divine. Fear as stuckness. When you live in fear or have feelings of fear, it is because you don't understand your true essence. It's not about trust or safety or courage. It's about understanding your true self as soul self and knowing that as soul self, you are infinite, eternal, and love. In this way, where is fear? Fear is not possible in this view. Light illuminates darkness, levity lifts gravity. In human view, of course, when you become locked into a particular view from human experience without remembering or recognizing soul, you often become afraid. You are afraid of pain. You are afraid of loss. 
you are afraid of confusion, you are afraid of chaos, you are afraid of violence, you are afraid of change, you are afraid of the unknown, above all, you are afraid of darkness. It is right to discern darkness and to acknowledge darkness, for darkness is what exists in lower vibrations. It is a clouding of right view, a covering of right understanding. Darkness seeks to obscure light. Darkness seeks to retain the illusion of separation. And yes, we say darkness is tricky, seductive, silky. It calls to the ego, invites the ego into the small, dark cave where it can hide and fume and create chaos to no end. Darkness is the master of illusion. Whereas light reveals all, illuminates every dark corner and recess of your life and your heart and leads you forward into radiance. You can spend your time in fear, but you don't need to. The result, the outcome, your destiny continues, whether you huddle in the corner and hide or simply open in grace to the experiences of this lifetime. Um, and again, this is from Messages from the Divine, uh, my most recent giant chunk of channeled spiritual teachings. Think about fear. Um, learn why holding on to fear, especially when the threat is over is a mind habit that we can choose to release. It's just kind of my thought for you today, especially when the threat is over. We're not quite through the woods on the pandemic. Um, we're not quite through the woods on a lot of things, but we have put into place new ideas, new ideas that support the collective that are um, uh, making a place for all of us rather than just a few people reaping the rewards. Uh, we are making progress and we can uh, count on that as light will um, be the thing that leads, uh, even though we're not always there in every moment. Let's go to the phones. Um, looks like we have Lisa calling. Lisa, welcome. Hi, Tara. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I was... Uh... I was actually listening to one of your recorded sessions and I suddenly realized it was Tuesday and then I looked again and I suddenly realized that it was 11 a.m. Pacific time and I'm like, oh nice. gosh, I guess I'm supposed to call. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Perfect. So What's a, everything yeah. you've said, yeah, everything you've said has had a ton of relevance um, and I've been trying to synthesize it down. I just turned 60 this summer and um I have a bit of deer and headlights of fear because it's like, God, maybe 20 years or whatever. But I've always had this young attitude of wanting to do things. I've been floundering for like the last, literally like last decade. I don't really, I kind of gave up a career back then. I never really took up a new one. I've done odds and eggs and I've been doing what I call subsistence living. And I would love to find some passion again. And I'm just at a loss because I feel like I'm too old, basically. Oh, oh my goodness. No, 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 not too old at all. Um, what's your, astro what's your sun sign? I'm a cancer. Okay. Oh, there's a lot going on right now for cancer. You might look at, I was just reading something. If I don't know if you know, Jessica Adams, she's out of, um, I think she's out of Australia or New Zealand or something. Jessica Adams, and she has a big blog on cancer right now, uh, moving around. Oh. So you might, that had, a, it was very lengthy and very good. The other thing is I have Thank a you. feeling you're, you're probably just coming out of your second Saturn return, which is like 58, 59. Um, and actually, I, I know astrology, and thank you for Jessica, because I, I hadn't heard of her. And my sudden return was actually two years ago, so I yeah. should be pretty well past this point. Yeah, yeah so, so things are starting to open up in a different way. Um, I think, so um, I would completely eliminate this idea that 60 is too old or 70 is too old. Or even for some people who have really strong health, 80s young still, I would, I would just trash that idea. 
you have a huge amount of time. You have as much time as you did from your 20s to your 40s and think what you accomplished then, right? And I think letting go of this idea, like I can't, it's too late. I'm just, you know, hobbling along to, to, the, to the end. No, <laughs> just don't waste another moment in that. Consider yourself as a, at a new starting point. Like, okay, I have 20 years. I got to, you know, who knows if we have one minute or 300 years left. I have no idea, but consider it as you can accomplish as much as you like and ask the universe, what is, what is my next step? And let go of this idea. Just, just let it go. We reach our really, we reach wisdom as we get older and this is meant to be shared. So go forward with that. Yeah. Go forward with that. I don't have any specifics for you, but that belief system has to get dropped and let go. Um, Lisa, I'm going to let you go because I need to wrap up the show, but thanks for calling in and um, I'll be interested to hear what you do create once you let go of that uh, false belief that you're too old. Um, Everybody, I want to thank you for listening. Um, I uh, direct you to the website. We've got lots of, I think we have 33 self-study courses that are all really affordable. We have training coming up for winter for those of you who want to go really deep. We have, a lot of you don't know, we have the Visionary Psychics, which is all the people that have graduated from the program, and they are fantastic readers and I highly suggest you go and see who interests you and, and get a reading from somebody on that page. There's quite a few folks there. Um, and then, of course, uh, just always have uh, Divine Astrology, which just came out for October. And you can find that at sarahweisman.com. It's the free channeled report for the next month to come. We'll probably cover it in the next show if I remember, <laughs> but you can look at it and watch the video and read the text there as to what's coming up for October, uh, 2022. Everyone, thank you so much for listening. I look forward to being with you next time. Thanks again. Want more of Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman? 